Hello Hidden Artists! Today I am going to do another demonstration of drawing an eye with Hidden Artist, except this time I'm going to use the stylus. The stylus gives you a few additional bits of control that you would have uh, that you don't have with your finger when you paint. So firstly, the stylus can measure pressure so you can control how hard you push, which then gives a uh, more deep color um, versus just a quick pass with a very light brush. We'll just color it a little bit. Um, I'll see if I can just demonstrate that here, uh, maybe on his forehead. So a quick brush, oh, this is his hat. It's fairly light. If I push much harder, you can see the color is much, much darker. It's still getting the same color. It's just really how, uh, how much you can see through it. And well, on a dark area like this, it's not actually that helpful to be able to do a, a, a gentle brush stroke. Sometimes when you're just trying to shade in an area and, and bridge a darker with a, a lighter area, it can really be helpful just to be able to do a very light brush and just slowly color it over a number of strokes. Um, secondly, um, there is the angle of the brush, you know, like a clock if you want to think of it that way. That will control the angle of the actual brush head. So here, if you look at it, you can see that the angle of that brush is in the same direction as what the stylus is. And as you turn the stylus, it will turn that angle of the brush. This is different from a finger where the finger or the angle of the brush will follow the direction of movement of your finger. So uh, it's just two different ways of painting. And if you have a stylus, you can alternate between them by using your finger or the stylus, depending on what you want to do. By, able to be, by being able to actually control that angle of the brush, you'll be able to do different things like painting thinner lines by dragging along the direction of the brush or thicker this way. Now, additionally, you can hold the brush upright to get a thinner line as well. So that's finally, three different areas that are quite helpful in making for or giving the artist a bit more control over what they're doing. Um, yeah, let's see how much of this I can undo out of here. There's a limited buffer. Okay, so now I'm going to try to do the eye. I find generally that for curved curve drawings or paintings like this where I'm following this line of contour, it can be more helpful actually to use your finger because the brush will follow the direction your finger is going, where in this case you really want the same thing but with a stylus you have to kind of rotate it. I do tend to rotate the iPad more while I'm painting with a stylus, just as if you might do with a, a painting or a piece of paper if you're drawing in real life. And just like I described in the f earlier tutorial where we did the other eye of this man, um, you do want to always start corner to corner of the eye and then this work on the iris. Start with the sides of it and work your way into the middle. You know, once again, because of the fixed angle of the paintbrush with the stylus, I won't quite do the same spiraling motion I did in the previous tutorial um, because it will make it a little bit more kind of more more rough as you go around. You get a thick and a thin line. It's not really what I want. I want to see an equal line, so I'll just work it around like this, turning the iPad as necessary, but it's still working towards the middle. Really what I want to do is locate that pupil in the middle, make it nice and dark. And just like I did with the other eye, I will then move on to drawing those radiating lines from the pupil out to the edge of the iris. Now this right eye is much darker. And so you don't see a lot of those lines in the iris. However, still worth doing. When you zoom out, you will see a little bit of variation. And once again, it's really important to get this little bit of bright light in here. It completely makes 
the eyes light up and be interesting to the viewer. And just finish it off with a few strokes, coloring the, the white of his eye. It's not very white in this drawing. And then clean up the edges, of course. We don't want any of those jaggedy edges. Let's finish off here. Color out from the corner of the eye. Bring it in. Again, for the corners of the eye, it's well worth zooming in. Just bring that corner color in a little bit. Up. Use your own discretion for how much of one color you want to pull in. You know, where you set the brush down is the color you're going to get for a little bit of the stroke. So you can control a little bit how or what color you use for each stroke. Go. That. Pull it out. We'll finish off this corner right here. Run along under the eye. For some of these strokes, I do find the stylus much easier because you can, with more pressure, get a much more deeper color on the first stroke. There we go. It's a bit of a sinister eye staring at me right now, judging my words. Perhaps thinking that I shouldn't have said more deeper and should have just said deeper. Anyway, I'm sure you understand what I'm saying. Color in this dark area here. It is trickier dealing in dark areas where you have this very quick transition between a dark and a light and you do want to work your panel on the edge of that just to slowly bring out or transition the color. Sometimes there might be a, a shadow like a really dark line that you want to crisp up but sometimes it's spread over a little bit of time and you don't really want a straight line you just want to blend it in okay so that's the corner of his eye it's looking quite good now we'll work up towards the eyebrow as we did for the last tutorial take it around up here and we'll see if we can draw in so get a good base color for the eyebrow and then with the stylus, because you can do quite thin lines, you can experiment with drawing a few more kind of hairs and uh, streaks inside the eyebrow to see if you like it. Now, of course, there's more than one way to do one of these paintings. There should, f like each painting should feel different from the next. And in fact, different people should have different styles. You know, how you apply detail will make a big difference to the end result. And that is part of painting. If all you wanted to achieve was a perfect representation of the original photo, then what's the point? Okay. All right. So maybe we'll just finish off this corner here. Now I highly recommend always finding some nice music to listen to as you paint. Painting is relaxing. It should be somewhat meditative. And, you know, it's up to you to find what music you would like. Personally, I like something that's just a relaxing background type of music, you know, similar to the classical music that I have playing behind these. And sometimes more melodic, a bit more modern. 
It just depends a little bit on what you're painting. You might be painting something that's a bit dark, a bit more menacing perhaps, and maybe a slightly more um, aggressive music might fit. Of course, it's all up to you. If you do like the music that's behind these videos, of course, look in the description below and you can find exactly what music it is and where I got it. All the music is royalty free and it should be um, should be linked to below so you can find exactly where I got it. Okay, so let's just finish off a little bit. You can just you don't want to leave any of these little white bits behind because they're hard to find later. So when you're zoomed in and you're painting an area, try to clean it all up before leaving. Okay, so there's another eye, much darker on this side. I'd say the quality is fairly similar between brush and stylus. I think it's up to you to decide what you prefer. And certainly for some things, if you're getting into a much more technical drawing, perhaps a vehicle or recently I was drawing a plane, and I do find that for some of the hard edges it does help to have a stylus. But uh, you know you can always achieve precision with a finger by just zooming in a bit more. All right, so that's it for now. Thank you again for watching one of these tutorials, and I hope you enjoyed it. Goodbye.